why? How did you get come up with C? I'm going to say 10% minus 4% equals 6%. All right. So if you do, the formula is nominal. And by the way, for Friday's multiple choice, I think there's like, if you know this formula, you get a couple easy ones like this. Nominal equals real plus inflation. What the bank charge is nominal, that's 10% equals real. That's what we're trying to find out. Price level has been increasing. That's inflation at four. So the real is six. Okay. All right. Next question. Give you a second um, to think about it. Then you could put your answer on. Yeah, that's the same problem. Yeah. All, right. All right, guys, who got it? What do we got? Broccoli, broccoli, broccoli. Yeah. Okay. A lot of broccoli. All right. So, last year, a borrower and a lender expected inflation at three. We'll put three there. When they signed the long term agreement with the fixed nominal of five. All right, Felix. Last year, what was the real? When they made this agreement, nominal is five, inflation is three, yeah. two, right? Nominal equals real. Okay. Now, the nominal they said is fixed. That means it can't change. So it's five. <clears throat> if the actual inflation rate of, let me back up. So that means, Felix, when I lent you money, I now could buy. 2%, when you pay me back, it's purchasing 2% more goods than it used to. So that's good for me, the lender, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, they say inflation's lower. Let's just make it two. What would real be? As a lender, is that good or bad for me? It's good, right? To say I can purchase 3% more to be a supplier. Okay? So this is a formula. That really helps on a lot of life. I just did it all context. Do you need to do the formula? Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Not everyone is. Not yeah, but... You you are special. C Smith. Story was to pay for all those that need our prayers. And we ask that you help us be present in the lives of the people around us through our relationships and our everyday interactions. Amen. St. John Baptiste de La So the first half I sat yesterday with the John Carroll people. Who is that? I don't know. All right, if you want to jot this down, this is for Friday how the test breaks down. 11 unemployment questions, five GDP, five real GDP, nine CPI. 
I mean, I don't know. Did I say bigger? Yeah, you sure. You just send that to me. Yeah. You just send that to me. Yeah, I'll send that email that everyone can get about it. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Keep your phone on half because there's probably another thing you want to take a picture of. Okay. All right. Here's all the formulas you need to know for the test. I figure you might want to take a picture of that. Probably took a picture of this photograph of memory. Yeah, stored it on there. Okay, yeah, okay, that's right. I sent it. Um, you sent it in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. As long as you're wearing the, the right socks, you're okay. I know. Uh, that's a lot of formula. Yeah, it is. All right. Um, really, for tomorrow's quiz, you need unemployment and labor participation. Okay. What, what's the one where it's oh, la labor force is employed and unemployed, right? Yes. Okay. We're going through that a little more tonight. All right, I'll be here after school. If you want to do a quick 20 minute review, um, yeah, we got some guys better this morning. Wednesday, tomorrow, questions are due, and we'll have a quiz on chapter 26. Practice quiz is up. I'll be on Zoom tonight at 7.45, and I'll be here tomorrow morning at 7.45 to go over the review for the quiz. All right, and then Thursday, I'll be here before and after school, go over the review for Friday's multiple choice. Okay, any questions on anything? Yes, sir. Retreat guys, can we do the redo after the quiz on Wednesday, like after school, yeah. just so I can worry about the yeah. chapter 26? Wow. Wow. Right. The retreat guys. Yeah. No. All right. Did we do structural on a point? Take out your notes from yesterday. We, we, we did that. We got cyclical. Yeah. Unnatural. Okay. All right. All right. Can we have zero unemployment? No. no. All right. Why not? You're right. Why not? Connor, great to have you. Connor, can I say, how many guys went on that thing to Montana? Well, okay. I probably taught six of them, right? Connor, you're the only person who turned in their notes. Good job. Okay. It, it, it makes me say I want to see that trip continue. Oh, yeah. You're uh, raising your hand. I know Blabber. you always had people graduating college. You always had people later. What type of unemployment is that? People uh, graduate. That would be frictional. Frictional. Okay. I would know that for tomorrow. And you also have what else? Uh, people looking for better jobs. That's still friction. You're right, though. Changing labor force with like technology taking over. So structural. Structural. Yeah. So you always have frictional, structural. So zero is not a goal, okay? So frictional and structural unemployment are present at all times. So the natural rate of unemployment, here's the key thing, is frictional plus structural unemployment. The only unemployment not included in the natural rate is cyclical unemployment. Okay. All right. Now, full employment is kind of the same thing. All right. 
no cyclical unemployment. So when they say full employment, unemployment could be 5% because you get frictional and structural. So don't think of full employment as zero. So it's never not full, or when it when it's not full, it's for cyclical unemployment. Correct. Okay. So the U.S. is at full unemployment, like when there's four. Now I would say four percent unemployment. And by the way, we're at three point seven. So we're even below that. So that's just like a lot of people working overtime and pushing harder or through. Okay. Are we good on this? All right. If I put this slide in, it means last year the kids screwed up. So full employment equals structural and frictional. No or no cyclical unemployment. How would a question come up for that? What would that be like? Um. The actual unemployment rate is 7%. The natural rate is 4 What is the cyclical the rate? All right. Um, the United States is at full unemployment, like, and then I might say zero. You know, just, yeah. All right. Now, on the back of your drill or on a board, can you draw a a PPC curve bowed out with these with these three points, A, B, and C. Put it on a board or the back of your truck. Mm. Try to save some room on your board if you can, because I'm going to ask you to grab something right next to it. Yeah, that's it. Right. That's that's right. Now go 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 to the second. Go to the if the natural raise it out. Here, I just want to go back for a second so you guys can see this. The real GDP yeah. rate is no cyclical. That means we're efficient. So look at. If the natural rate, what did they say is here between? So B is the natural rate. So you, you're being efficient. It would be as we all know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's between yeah. points. So. Yeah. Uh, that's all right. Now, uh, <clears throat> now draw a business cycle showing the same points. And just remember, that's what the business cycle looks like. Now show, now show A, B, and C on the business side. What? C was outside, and I'll show it to you. Over. Over.
Where should the lowest unemployment be here? Uh, All right. So you're putting the 8% here. Here is the recession, right? The trough. So there's where the 8% would go. Okay. Now, this red line, kind of, here, you're producing very little. This black line represents full employment. What? Um, I would actually put B where the actual and the full cross. So I put it there. Let's see, is that where I did it? Yeah. Okay. Now, truthfully, you could have put it there. Yeah. Okay. You could have put it there. Okay. Long as you know when the actual clock crosses the full. And then unemployment's at the lowest here. Okay? And that's because that's the P you're producing the most. Remember, real GDP, which the line is, is production. So here, high production, low unemployment, high inflation. That could be big on the quiz tomorrow. No, I mean, I, I, I would know it. Okay. So, yeah. You could get the notes from one of your friends. All right, the next thing. It's criticisms of unemployment. We're just on yesterday's too. Okay. Okay. All right. The unemployment rate. Now, here's the major criticism: discouraged workers. All right. So, those are people no longer looking for a job because they have given up. So, say this whole room. Which looking for a job? What ha what happens to the unemployment rate in the United States? It goes down. Because you're not part of the labor force anymore. You're not considered unemployed because you gave up. Now, is that a good indication for how the economy is going? No. no. So that is a big criticism. Now, the labor force participation rate which is labor force over population also decreases. All right? So both these, both the unemployment rate and the labor force participation rate both decrease with discouraged workers. So kind of not a good, not a good sign. Okay. Now, so that's one criticism. Stephen works 10 hours a week. He wants to work 50. Is he considered unemployed or employed? Employed. Employed. However, he's not making enough money, say, to take care of his family. So that kind of is showing something that isn't really true. He really needs a better job. All right? So that's another, you know, that's another criticism of the this of the um, unemployment rate. And then the third is race, age, inequality. All right. Like it, there's a high percentage of um, teenagers unemployed. There's a high percentage of certain races unemployed. All right. So those are the three criticisms, even though the race, age, inequality. I don't really think, all right, it doesn't show like, it's just the rate. So it doesn't show that teenagers are more or less. Um, so is it only a real statistic you can tell Thompson every year? Yeah, but I'll say 
In 2019, when Trump was running for president, Obama had a very low unemployment rate. And Trump's argument was because there were so many discouraged workers that it made Obama look good. Okay. Now, because I love politicians, when Trump got elected in January, the unemployment rate was low. And he said, what a great job I'm doing. So when it works for you, you use it. When it works against you, you don't. Um, but anyhow, that that's that. All right? Any questions on that? All right. Now, do you think all countries have the same natural rate of unemployment? So what we're saying, do all countries have the same frictional and structural unemployment? Um, I would think that the socialist countries would probably have uh, lower, or probably have less in our view. Why? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Just a gut feel? Yes. Okay. Uh, it was in the book said the Marxist ideology was um, that like Marx scared workers by the the people that weren't employed and it was like oh, I'm trying to think how to explain it. It's like you're encouraged to work because of the mass people that aren't employed. If I'm explaining that wrong, tell me. Oh, no. You're good. Um, right. I was not going to say something as the top, but I was more so to say, like, I feel like socialist countries work is probably more like institutionalized. So it's, it's, it's pushed upon by the government. So there's more like social pressure. I yeah. think that's what yeah. language, yeah. language um, moving towards. All right. Now, You guys hit on a couple of things, but let me just flip this up here for you. The natural rate in France and Germany, not socialist country, either one, is eight to ten percent. Why might their natural rate of unemployment be higher than this? Maybe like higher um, unemployment insurance if people are willing to spend more for the jobs for better money. Okay, and that's one of their biggest things. Um, like France and Germany, very generous unemployment benefits. So the United States, besides COVID, we usually keep you six months, maybe a year. In some European countries, it's indefinite. So now, you might be getting 70 or 80% of your salary. So to me, 80% of 40,000 sitting at home might sound good some people couldn't pay their bills though so it's not but if you could pay your bills and you could so what is welfare are we are we moving to france what, what is welfare? welfare is first of all i think i'm pretty sure you have to have moms like you have to have a family um and living off welfare is not like 80 percent. no no yeah, I don't think anyone's goal is to live off welfare. It's tough. Yeah. All right. So that, that affects it. All right. Any questions on full employment, natural rate of unemployment, anything about unemployment? So I would, you know, and I'll do the review tonight, but I would say you got to know the difference between frictional, structural, and cyclical. You got to know the natural rate of unemployment and full unemployment. And then the two formulas, labor participation rate and um, the um, unemployment rate. And yeah, when you get a chance, not now, did you send Cisco a picture of all the formulas? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Is structural, like self-checkout? No, structural is you were a steel worker and they moved the steel mill from Dundalk to Mexico. So now, all your assembly line skills, Not for you. no one cares. Yeah. Or, whatever you were, like you're a VCR repairman, 
and no one has VCRs except like old people like me. So we need one repairman for the state of Maryland and there's 50 of you. Okay. All right, calculate the unemployment rate in this country. If you need to calculate it, that's fine. I'll give you a minute to do it. Then put the after on a board. All right. What do what do we you got the right thing So twenty over two hundred's right. So you got to turn it in for a second. Right. And then you turn it behind. Right. All right. So I'm looking at see some ten percent, some ten percent, ten percent. Cyclical counts the unemployment rate, not the natural rate. All right. So the natural of the unemployment rate is uh, unemployed over employed plus unemployed, which is the labor force. All right. So unemployed 10, structural 5, cyclical 5 is 20. So that goes down here, plus employed is 180. So you got 20 over 200, which is 10% times 100. Okay. Now, if they asked you here, what's the natural rate of unemployment? What are the two that would be there? Big brick shows per, right? So it'd be 15 over the 200, right? Is cyclical included in the, in the, bottom, in the bottom of that? Equation? Yeah, because it's still, you're still on the labor force. Um, if you're like, not in terms of the math, but like in terms of measuring, like how do they determine what's structural versus cyclical? Oh, you mean literally how do they get these numbers? Yeah. They, they do about 4,000 phone calls across the United States, where I'm not a statistics major, but this statistically makes the generalizations strong. And then they ask you these questions. Okay. Now, the one thing I'm guessing people lie on is when was the last time you looked for a job? Because you want to keep your unemployment. Um, and you have to look, I think, once every four weeks or something to keep your unemployment. But they sometimes ask for proof, but it's based on phone calls. Does that count for minimum wage jobs, too? Like what do you mean? Any, any job? If you're collecting. Yeah. Yes. All right. Next up, let's see what we got here. Which of the following? All right. This is definitely a question that could be on the quiz tomorrow. Go. Give you a minute. Uh, 
That's for sure. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm waiting for Jack. All right, boards, please. It's not Bradley. 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 It's not is Chris in the labor force? No. Is Kim, who's going to school full time, in the labor force? No. Now, when she graduates and starts, a pat we got Leslie, who retired, labor force? Retired. Retired. No. Lee, who's working 20 hours per week and is seeking, is he employed or unemployed? Employed. Employed. And we would say he's not getting enough hours. All right. The, Official unemployment rate understates the unemployment level in the economy because the official unemployment rate Boys, please. I got a lot of broccoli. I got a lot of broccoli. I think I saw it with the line straight. I need to go. He goes back. From bottom to top. I got a line. Isaac. The door is underemployed. Ha ha ha. Say that again. I know it is. I know it is. Hi, guys. Can we be quiet so he could and go? I know it ignores this discouraged person, but it is more than other. Oh, yes. Because if you're working 20 hours and you want 50, you're considered employed. Uh, but that's All right. Let's squeeze out um, one more. Calculate the labor force participation. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, no, we didn't. We did the unemployment rate. Uh, Different formula. Oh, wait, let me put it on. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you use times 100? Yes. The times are 100 to get the percent, right? This will just something. I don't know if I want to do so much. You know what that equals for Dr. Toy? That would be 66. Yeah. All right. Without a calculator, you're on exit. So, yeah, let's see what says. All right. What percent do we got? 67. All right. So, labor force participation is labor force over top population. So, the labor force is. 180, 190, 200, over 300. All right, last one. Good try. Try to get out of here. If, ooh, this is a tough one. Scott, tough one. Yeah, you're just having accounting in there, right? No. Okay. Right. Good luck. Okay. All right, the no, no, no. You're good. Uh, what? I'm just all Only we're we're tight we're tight on time. So if nominal GDP, if I guys, I hate. Say, Connor, stop that. Just everyone just pay attention. If nominal 
equals real plus inflation. If the nominal is seven and the real is three, what does inflation have to be? Price level is increasing. Yeah. Anytime you see nominal and real, that's nominal equals real. I just set it up. All right. Have a great day. Yeah, I know. That's I, I, I'm impressed.